This is Zach Yacoub from How to Get a Job in Sports.com, and I'm here with Nick Barlich, President of Business Operations for the Cleveland Cavaliers. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Great to connect today, Zach. I appreciate the time. Yeah, it's great to talk to you. So uh, let's talk about your time in college. You went to St. John's University. You know, tell me about your time there. Yeah, it was, it was great. You know, I, I spent um, my four years there. I played basketball for three out of the four years, and um, it was a great experience. You know, it's it's, a, it's not it's not the St. John's University on the East Coast. It's the one in the in the middle of kind of nowhere in Minnesota, in the Pine Curtain, as we refer to it. Uh, great liberal arts school taught me a lot about values and, and how to you know approach life the right way and um, and, and the value of relationships. But um, you know, I, I really enjoyed my time there. It kind of laid the foundation for for me to be able to to move on from college and and you know pursue a, a career in sports. So you had known the whole time that you wanted to go to the NBA. No, no. I started out as a as a pre a wannabe pre med major that um, couldn't couldn't hack it. My mind, you know, organic chemistry. They they said there's some ridiculous stat the amount of people that drop out after they go through organic chemistry pre med. That is, and I was one of those stats, and I, I'm proud to be one of those stats. Um, but I, I ended up switching majors my sophomore year, uh, focused on psychology, and then and then took some business classes as well with the with the guys to get into the sports business. Um, I received an internship the summer after my sophomore year with the Collegiate Wood Bat minor league team. And then from there, it was really, it was all in on a career in sports. It was kind of no looking back. So it, uh, but, but the school is a great school and provided me a lot of unique opportunities. So That's great. For the job you have now, would you say you've learned, you learn more, you know, in the classroom or outside of the classroom in college? No, I, I, I look, college was fantastic and great, but I, I've, I've learned so much through just, you know, doing and through experiencing um, in sports. And, and that's been, you know, so I'm a big advocate whenever I try to mentor as many, as many uh, mentoring a, a gal right now that's just graduated from high school. And I tell her all the time, like, life experience is so valuable. And that doesn't devalue an MBA. That doesn't devalue, um, you know, an undergraduate degree. It just, I just firmly believe that things like internships and, and, and you know, the ability for people to earn kind of experiential um experiential equity in, in what they're what they're trying to accomplish or what they're trying to do with their career you know it just gives you such a more tangible feel for ultimately if it's something you want to do or something you don't want to do and so um which i think is just as important right you get into something to be like this is not what i want to do that that's almost as important as as important as finding what you do want to do and so um i, I think that you know those life experiences are critical in, in kind of your journey as you're, as you're trying to go through and achieve your goals so in your case, you would say that the internships were your key to getting a job with the Suns? Yeah, I mean, I think my internship was a big part of it. And then my senior year of college, my second semester, and then the summer following, I was then, you know, I was, I was called back to work for the team as, as, a, as an assistant GM, really focused on sales and marketing and ballpark operations. You know, the assistant GM for a collegiate summer wood bat league team isn't like an assistant GM of a minor league team or assistant GM of a... I guess it'd be like a minor league team, but it's not like assistant GM of a pro team, right? And so I was really focused on, you know, getting the business ready for the summer. Um, and so I think that internship plus that, um, that experience right out of college slash just as I was finishing school was really what got me into um, the interview with the Suns eventually and then got, got my foot into the door for sports. Because I'll, I'll be candid, Zach, you know, when I first started applying my fall of my fall semester of my senior year, I sent out, you know, 100, I always remember this, but 172 resumes and cover letters and never even got a call back. And so it wasn't until I was able to bolster my work experience a bit more that I was able to, to get a call back and to get a look at uh, joining the NBA. So that's great. I was about to mention that. What do you think that that taught you, you know, sending out 172 of those, you know, messages that didn't work out? I will say, man, it, 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 I got a little chip on my shoulder. Um, I, I don't know if it's still there, but my first three or four years, you know, I, I just, I wanted to prove that when I was able to finally earn an opportunity in sports, that I was able to really not just step through the door, but I really wanted to make the most of the opportunity. I really wanted to make and take advantage of, of the platform I had to, to really help prove that I could, I could work in sports and I could do it at a high level. And so it definitely, it was a huge motivating, motivating factor for me. Um, realizing that like, look, I, I can do this and I can prove to people that I can be successful you know, it created, like I said, a little bit of a chip, but I, I used it in a very productive way 
um, and was something that I was, um, you know, just extremely fortunate to be able to earn an opportunity with the Suns after that, after that minor league season. And, and, and that really laid the foundation for me to kind of get things moving in the right direction relative to the NBA. Was getting a job with the NBA all that you thought it would be? Yeah, look, I mean, I think, I think a great thing for people is to start in minor league sports, even if they end up wanting to work in, in, professional, in professional sports, just because, you know, there's such a great opportunity of learning so many aspects of the business. And I also think you appreciate a little bit greater the resources you have with a professional sports team. You know, I, I can tell you, um, I was a front office of two when, when I worked for the Alexandria Beatles in the Northwoods League, and now I'm a part of an, a front office with the Cleveland Cavaliers and a few other of our properties, the Cleveland Monsters and the Ken Charge, uh, of a little over 500 full-time team members. And so, you know, you, you really don't get an appreciation for the resources that you have unless you go through an experience like that. And so for me, it's always been a way for me to kind of maintain center and be thankful for the great resources we do have um as an organization just because i know what it's like when you when you're trying to make make a big impact with not as many resources and so i think it's a it's a great place to start it's a great place to at least spend some time in your career because it gives you additional perspective other than just what it's like when you're kind of at the top of the top of the pyramid if you will relative to professional sports yeah that's great you know when you talked about not having all the resources you know when you were in the minors you had to do a bit of everything right you were even a mascot for a little bit you know what did that teach you <laughs> Um, you've done your research. It's good to, good to know. Um, yeah, look, I, I think there's a degree of humility and, and a degree of um, kind of humble and hungriness that you, you, you take from those experiences. And I also think there's some credibility. You know, I, there's really not a job that I haven't done or had to do um, in, from a business perspective on the sports side at this point. And so I can look somebody in the eye and tell them I know what it's like to sell a ticket for a, a non-playoff team. I can look somebody in the eye and say, hey, look, I did, I did players laundry. I, I did, I was the mascot. I was, you know, I was broke beyond belief for quite a while. I mean, like, I mean, there's a lot of things that, you know, you can really um, share whether they're life experiences or whether they're professional experiences. And, and ultimately, you know, for, for me, it was a willingness to do whatever it took to accomplish or to, to work towards a dream, which was to work in professional sports. And so, um, you know, I would do basically, as long as it was moral and as long as within my moral guidelines and my ethical guidelines, I would do whatever it would take to, to ultimately earn an opportunity. And, um, you know, and that, that was, there was many more stories other than just those moments that, you know, I, I think you try to work to show it, but it was, um, it really makes you appreciate it. More, I will say that. And I think it, like I said, I go back to my point I just said, which is the perspective it provides, I feel like is so important and so valuable um, as you go throughout your career. And it's important to not forget what those experiences are. And it's important to not forget about where you come from. And I still talk to, my, my first ever, I still talk to my first and my second and my third boss quite frequently um, because they're kind of mentors and or if not just good friends of mine because I think relationships are so important in this thing. So you just mentioned relationships and mentorship. How important is, you know, connections in this industry? Look, it's, I think it's, it's really important. I was very fortunate. I worked for the same guy for like basically the first seven years of my 14 years in the NBA and or within his organizational chart right and so um and and that really gave me a great consistency and a great foundation and a great mentor and then i picked up mentors along the way as i met other people or we worked with different consultants or we worked with the mba or we worked with you know or i worked with clients you know i even have a, a couple of um, my main mentor outside of sports was a was a was a big customer of ours or a big client of ours for, for a really long time. And, and so we just, we spurned a friendship. And then I told him, I'd look, I'd love to, if you wouldn't mind just mentoring me through certain things, you've got unique perspectives and experiences that I'll never get in sports. Um, and I want to know how somebody like you thinks about it. And so, yeah, I would say now it's like, you know, those relationships are so important. I mean, there's still people I talk to to this day that I started with in sports and, you know, and, and they help, and we help each other. We push, you know, we push and pull back and forth, whether it's ideas or strategies or people or candidates or, you know, whatever it might be. And, and those relationships, especially in the sports industry, you know, I've learned every industry has some kind of fraternal nature to it relative to relationships and how tight knit it can be, whether it's, it's, it's construction or law or medical. Um, but sports is unique in the sense that it can really span the country pretty efficiently and pretty quickly. And it is a tighter knit group. Um, it feels like than some of those other more traditional industries. And so relationships, your personal and professional brand, 
what you stand for, you know, all those things are so incredibly important as you think about not just getting into sports, but then ultimately trying to grow your career. That's great. So let's talk about, you know, your first run at the Cavs. You joined as a premium sales manager. You know, the team, you know, the team wasn't doing very well, you know, for the free first run there. You know, they didn't have, you know, the star power they had, you know, in 2016, you know, 2015. So tell me about what it was like, you know, selling tickets for a team that, you know, wasn't that good. You know, you, as you said before, non-playoff team. Yeah, I mean, my first year there was actually 2009, 2010. So we, we, that was the year we had the best record, I think, in the NBA. And um, we, had, we had traded for Shaq that summer before that season. And, and it was, you know, we were, we were like the Eastern Conference Finals favorite slash NBA Finals, rep, you know, representing the East um, favorite going into the year. And then we lost in the second round to Boston. And then obviously, you know, everything else happened kind of after that. Uh, look, for me, it was, I spent two and a half years selling in Charlotte for the Bobcats prior to that. Um, and, and so for me, it was like, look, we had a great owner in Dan. We had a we had great senior leadership between Len Kamarowski, our CEO, who's our CEO now, and, and a bunch of other folks along the way. Mike Toman, who is the reason, who's the guy that I'd worked with for quite some time. And so I felt great about the situation. You know, look, for me to sell a, a, tr a tough a tough basketball team like I never really sold wins and losses I always sold the experience I always sold how it could be a solution for people's lives whether that's um, you know personally professionally their business whatever it may be and so I would really try to stay away from wins and losses because I just never felt like it was a sustainable way to sell or to position a product um, and so I've always tried to focus on like I said how is it a solution for people in their lives and and so it was just, it was repositioning our mentality. It was repositioning our strategy and the way we told our story that way. Um, and look, it was a year of, it was a year of choppy water. There's no doubt navigating, you know, kind of post the decision, um, you know, 1.0. But then after that, we started kind of getting into growth mode. And how we got into growth mode was we, we recruited great people. We recruited people that were hungry. We recruited people that were really interested in our cause and what we were trying to build. Um, and that just started to kind of permeate throughout the, throughout the organization. And, and we started to get a lot of organic confidence. And, and not that we didn't have it from before, because we absolutely did, but it was shaken a bit because we had gone through such a, such a shift. But, you know, the, the, that's why I go back to these things. Whenever you go through adversity like that, whether it's in business or in life, it's, it, it's really important you have great people around you. We have an amazing chairman in Dan Gilbert um, who affords us you know, just incredible resources to be able to do what we need to do and do it the right way. Uh, and we try to be very responsible with that and how we make an impact with those resources and ultimately try to drive our business forward, drive our community forward. Um, but we're really fortunate in that way. And, um, and, and so, you know, whenever you have those kind of situations, those kind of opportunities, um, it allows you to really focus on building the business the right way. And, and that was really what we did. And like I said, it was, it was all about recruiting the right people. It was all about having the right process and the right story. Um, and then it was just about execution. We executed pretty well for a while there and, and ultimately were able to start growing the business again, despite the wins, the wind, the wind column wasn't growing. It was staying roughly the same in the same zip code. So, um, but that was, that was a great experience for me. And this is what I always tell, like whenever I'm talking to people, um, especially younger people who's trying to get a start in sports or start in life, is we didn't look at it for the challenge that it could present. We looked at it for the opportunity that it was. And I think that's so important. You know, anytime you look at something like it's a challenge and it's not something you can achieve or it's, or it's a hurdle or it's difficult. No, 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 no. At the end of the day, it's just an opportunity for you to get better. It's an opportunity to reinvent yourself. It's an opportunity to do things differently. Um, and so you have to look at it from that mentality because it will automatically orient, orient you around a positive mentality, which is so important when you're thinking about, you know, handling and working through harder situations. In the industry. So I'll stop rambling, Zach. I apologize. <laughs> Long-winded way to answer your question. No, that's a great, that's a great answer. So you talked about, you know, selling the experience, not necessarily wins and losses. You might not be the one directly selling tickets anymore, but you know, what's your, you know, ticket sales advice? Look, I, I mean, we're all selling at the end of the day, always, you know, that's, that's kind of our, our mentality. But I think in this current state, which is obviously a different state than anybody's ever really had to deal with in, in our lifetime, um, I think it's about having empathy. I think it's about ultimately meeting people where they are. I think it's about, you know, getting to know these people at a deeper level than we've ever had to before. Not because we didn't want to, but maybe just because we didn't take the time to. 
And so I think at the core of it, it's really important to have an incredible relationship and then allow that relationship to be the foundation from a selling perspective around how you're going to position or how you're going to ultimately get to a product. And I tell ourselves, people, this often, like right now, it's like, look, we, let's not even talk about a product. Let's talk about them. Let's get to know them. Let's get to know their, ch their children's name. Let's get to know what they do. Let's get to know how their business makes money. Let's get to know who their ideal customer is. Let's get to know what they're working through from a cultural end. And, and then let's take that and let's establish that as the relationship and the foundation, like I said. And then let's use that in the, in the journey to ultimately getting them into a place where they want to invest with us. And so, and, and that's not, you know, that's not meant in any type of other, any way other than just saying we want to do things the right way. Uh, we want to do things in a sustainable fashion and we want to do things operating off of a, a great relationship. Okay. So you were able to become, you know, the youngest team president, you know, in the NBA, you know, what does that mean to you? Honestly, man, it doesn't mean much if I don't, if I'm, if I, if I'm not, if I'm not focused on being, you know, great at what I'm doing, which ultimately should really be about how we're supporting and putting our team members in a, in a position to be as successful as they can be in their personal and their professional lives. You know, for me, I've never really looked at this thing like an age thing. I've looked at this thing like, how can you, um, how can you make an impact and how can you make a difference? You know, first and foremost for our team members and for our community. And then secondarily, not necessarily, necessarily secondarily to that, but right alongside of that is how we can do that within our business as well, whether that's growing revenues or, you know, operating the business in the most efficient and effective manner. Um, but for me, it's like, look, you know, the, the age thing, it's, it's, I'm, I'm extremely grateful and thankful to, to be in this position at an early age in my career. Um, but, you know, with all that said, it, it doesn't mean much if I don't, if we don't do the right things with it, you know, if, if we just, take it as a good old pat on the back and then you move on. It's like, look, that, that's not, that's not the way I'm wired. It's like, I just, I want to be great at this. And, and the way that you're great at it, in my opinion, is you focus on building um, a great team. And, and I'm very, we're very fortunate. We have a great team um, at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse for the Cavs and the Monsters and, and the Charge and the, and the Legion GC. But, you know, from my perspective, it's more about that than it is, you know, what I've accomplished. Cause I, I, you know, look, I mean, I'm, I'm one piece of the puzzle. I'm definitely not the whole puzzle. I'm not two thirds of the puzzle. And so, um, like I said, I'm very humbled and, and very um, honored by it, but at the same time, it's not, it's, it's definitely not going to be what, at least what I focus on and as far as how it defines you. Um, I'd rather have our work and our impact be what defines us as a team. So you talked about the importance of, you know, building a good team, you know, building a good staff, you know, what do you look for, you know, in a job interview? Yeah, we look for four main things, uh, four main kind of key characteristics. I, I tell people all the time, like I firmly believe we find the right people, we can mold them through our culture and through our training and through our environment into great professionals. And so we look for people that are organically positive um, or, or they have a positive attitude that comes across in their energy and their disposition. Uh, we look at people that are passionate about what they want to do. Look, it's very easy to be passionate about sports, but it's not as easy to be passionate about selling tickets or about, um, you know, running a building or about sanitization or about, you know, finance or HR or marketing or digital or like, you, but you got to be passionate about what you do. It can't just be about sports. It's got to be about what you do. Uh, I, I firmly believe you've got to be open to learning. You've got to be, you got to be willing to try new things. You got to be permeable to change. You got to be able to innovate with the times. Um, I, I, this is something I've always admired. Like I said about our chairman, Dan Gilbert and, and, and our CEO, Len Kowarowski is they'll surround themselves with people that help them evolve and help them, you know, innovate and, and, and stay ahead of the curve relative to what's going on in society. So, but I think you got to be open to learning. You got to be open to new ideas. And then finally, this was big for me, but you just got to be willing to work hard. You know, there's, there's, there's no shortcuts, at least in my mind, in this thing. And the people that are willing to work hard and are positive and are passionate about what they do and they're open and to, they're intellectually curious and trying different things. I've seen those characteristics be so consistent in all the people that I've seen that have been successful in life. Uh, and that's ultimately what we, what we look for. So those are the characteristics you look for. You know, what do you look for on someone's resume, you know, right out of college if they're looking to, you know, sell tickets? Um, you know, look, I, I think, I think what, you know, stands out to me is the people that are willing to not only be able to achieve schooling at a decent level, 
You know, we don't take a lot of 2.8s. We don't take a lot of 2.6s um, from a GPA perspective. Um, not saying we don't, not saying we wouldn't, but just saying, you know, it's, you got to see the, the, I think the GPA is obviously a key KPI. And then ultimately, I, I don't really look at the major as much as I do what they do outside of their normal schooling. So are they involved in volunteer opportunities? Are they involved in internships? Are they involved in, you know, sports? Are they involved in stuff that goes above and beyond the kind of normal um, day-to-day kind of college, um, you know, college experience? Because in my opinion, that shows initiative. And that also shows that they have a, they have a bigger desire to be a part of something that's bigger than just themselves. And, and I think that part's really important. You know, life experience is, is, is so valuable. I see that they've interned for another team. And it doesn't matter for us if it's minor league, major league, whatever it might be. But if they have got sports experience and they're willing to put themselves out there in that way. Um, you know, and for me, like when I was in college, I didn't even really realize this was a good thing to do for a career. But I, I did after I got into it. But like I was, uh, I was very involved in Special Olympics as I went through college. And as I, as I look back on it, that experience helped provide me such a different perspective. It allowed me to give back. And, um, and now, you know, I think about volunteering and the time we spend on community boards and other things. Like, it's really important in my mind, the impact we make in our community. And that started way back when, when I just decided to raise my hand to go volunteer for Special Olympics. And, and so I think seeing that, but trans, translating that into candidates and what we see in candidate resumes, that part's really, really, really important is that they're, they're well-rounded uh, and that they have, more of a, they have more of a focus than just on their school studies. Don't get me wrong, those are important, but it doesn't, doesn't always tell the whole picture. So you would rather see you know, a business major who's done things outside than a sport management major who's just done things in the classroom? I would say, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I like both, candidly, um, but one that's got a more robust experience outside of the classroom, I, I think that's, like, I was, a, I go back to it, I was a psychology major, right? Like, I had no sports management program, I, I tried to add an emphasis in business administration, but I was a psych major, and um, it, it didn't hold, you know, it held me back maybe initially, but once I started getting more experience, it, it did hold me back from being able to earn the opportunities that I was looking for. So you talked about, you know, looking for internships on the resume. Did the Cleveland Cavalier, does your team offer internships? We do. Yeah, we typically have what we call now seasonal ships that last kind of throughout our season. Um, Cavs, Monsters, Charge season. Then we also have some that we offer in the, uh, in the summer months. We, we, aren't, we don't have any of those open right this moment because obviously we're out of we're out of season here for right now, um, but I would anticipate as we start to get fired up for 2021, we start to get some of those back in the mix. Do you look to hire people for full-time positions out of those internships? Absolutely. One of the things, I mean, that, that's true for just growth within our organization. We, I would, we, we would rather grow from within than we would having to hire a bunch of people externally. You know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that you, you, you get somebody in you, you stay get started. I mean, we have people that started as seasonals that came into our, our foundation sales program that now are managers or directors or, you know, VPs. And it's not just in ticket sales, it's throughout our entire organization. Uh, I can think of a gal that interned for us. Now, now she's, a, she's, a, she's a director within our business, you know, and she's, but she's been with us basically all throughout her entire college experience. And so those, those are the, that's what we look for. That's what we want. We want to be able to find somebody um that's great that's hungry that wants to be a part of it like i said has those four characteristics i mentioned and then they ultimately want to grow their career with us that's like a that's like a dream come true so so is this internship program for just juniors and seniors in college or is it for all four years we don't have a limit we don't have necessarily designation on it i will say majority of the candidates tend to be in the junior and senior area but we also have sophomores i know we've hired we, we've I don't know if we've hired freshmen yet, but we have, you know, for sure, sophomore, juniors, and seniors. So is there anything different? I mean, you look for there. I mean, obviously, they probably haven't done as many internships already. Are you do factor in grades more? Um, yeah, I mean, I think you definitely factor in grades a little bit more. I also think that there's some, especially in this day and age, like think about Zach, how did you, how did you get me, right? You sent me a LinkedIn message. You followed up, you followed up, you followed up. Like, I like I'm like I'm mentoring a few people that are in high school and college right now and you know part of where that started was exactly with what you just did 
which is reaching out, trying to create connections, trying to create, create inroads. And then, the, and then the ones that really want it bad, they follow up, man, and they're after it. And they stay on you. They stay relevant. And then it's like, that's the easiest way to be able to really spurn these kind of things. You know, in, in this day and age of connectivity and, 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 and things like LinkedIn and just all the opportunities we have out there to connect, uh, there's no reason why you can't just start reaching out to people. And, and doing exactly what you did, Zach, which I commend you for. And I try to, I try to pay it back um, with stuff like this. And, and like I said, mentoring things because I, I appreciate the hustle and, and it was what got me in the door. And, and I hope it can be how I can help other people get in the door and, and their careers, you know, um, as they look to evolve. But, you know, that, that's ultimately, you know, just, just start somewhere. You know, I, and I tell people all the time, like I, I was talking to somebody the other day who's going to be a freshman in college next fall. And I said, you are already so far ahead of the game by simply wanting to do this. Like that simple action of wanting to reach out and ask questions and understand what, what you know, what my job is like or what, what our organization is like or what, you know, what like even career coaching, you know, and, and those kind of things. Like you're so far ahead of the process just because you're thinking that way. And just because you had the, cur the courage to send the email or to set up the time to talk like that is incredibly, incredibly, um, you know, just a proactive approach that will ultimately make you a lot more successful. That's great. Thank you. So you just mentioned connections. You mentioned it earlier. Would you agree with the statement that it's not what you know, it's who you know? Look, man, I think it's a combo. I really do. I mean, I think relationships definitely can help carry you. Um, but if you're not intellectually curious and if you're not willing to open, open your mind up and try new things and can continue to learn and be a student of, be a student of your craft every single day, you're going to have, you're going to be limited at some point, you know, you're, you're absolutely going to be limited at some point. And so I'm a firm believer that it's about having a passion for, you know, and, and a passion for your craft, but also being intellectually curious combined with having great relationships and, and, and really caring about people. I think you combine those two things together and it becomes a, a, a perfect storm in a positive way for your own growth and your own development. Because I think who you know can probably get you to a certain point, but you can't fake it forever. And, and so I think that's the piece that you kind of start to, um, you just gotta be real about. And at least that's always been the way that I've approached it. Not saying it's right or wrong. Um, and not saying somebody else's is right or wrong, but just saying that's kind of how I've always tried to, to look at it is combine those two ingredients um, to, to put you in the best position as you can be to be successful. So you talked about, you know, the love of your craft is more important than the love of the sport, but do you see, is there many people who don't love the sport, you know, working in the NBA or is it mainly people who love basketball? No, I, I think there's, I mean, look, there, we do have some, you know, we have people on our team that are college wrestlers or we're college soccer players or, you know, or we're no athletes to be candid, which is all good too. Um, but you know, there's, and I look at a buddies of mine that have maybe started in an NBA and gone to the NHL or maybe started in the, you know, there's, there's all that kind of um, transition that goes on in our business. And look, it's, it's, it's not, it's not necessarily about the sport. In, in my opinion, it's about the platform and it's about the experiences that you can provide that are incredibly transferable no matter whether you're selling basketball, hockey, football, baseball, whatever it might be. And, and so I really think it's about, um, it's about those experiences and it's about that platform. And I think everything else kind of that sits on those platforms can be very transferable. Um, you know, no matter if you're using a stick and a ball, no matter if you're using a, um, you know, a, 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 a round ball or an oval ball or whatever it might be, but all those things are extremely transferable when you think about it from a business perspective. So um, I, I don't know if that answers your question or not, but that, that's kind of the way that I, I look at it. So you, you mentioned earlier how it's important to, you know, do things outside of the classroom, but, you know, assuming people have done the same outside of the classroom, do you think it's important to have a sports management major or is that irrelevant? I, I don't think it hurts. But, you know, look, if you don't want to pigeonhole yourself into that, um, you know, your first two years of college, don't feel like you need to. You know, an e-com e degree can accomplish it. A communications degree can accomplish it. A marketing degree can accomplish it. A psychology degree can accomplish it. I mean, there's a lot that can accomplish it. So don't, you know, don't, I, I, don't, don't feel, I, would, I always tell people, like, act off of your passions because your passion, what you're passionate about is ultimately going to carry you through. And I'd say the same thing with your coursework, you know, 
if you're passionate about something, it, it, it's ultimately what your coursework should follow because it's going to make it feel like it's more valuable and more tangible to you. Um, and, and don't feel like you got to just, you know, pigeonhole yourself in a sports management program. It helps. I'm not going to say it hurts. It definitely helps. But it's, it, you know, there's a lot of different ways to be successful in this thing. And you don't just have to take the same path as everybody else. So what advice would you give to a 22 year old who wants to, you know, get a job with the Cavaliers? I would say do a lot of this, you know, get out and put yourself out there. I would say before you're 22, try to get some type of life experience relative to an internship or a seasonal ship or, you know, something. And it, and it doesn't need to be in the NBA. Candidly, I'd prefer if it is in minor league sports in some form or fashion, because those people tend to have a different degree of passion to them than people that do if they just come all the way through the ranks. And that, that's not, that's not always a true statement, but they just, they, you, you get scrappy, you get efficient in those settings. And I think it's, it's really, it's incredibly valuable, but I'd say, you know, get life experience, do the, these kind of things, reach out, you know, teamwork online is a great place um, to be able to find entry level jobs in sports. That's where I got hired out of the Phoenix Suns and Buffy, who's a, who's a good friend and lives actually in, in right in the same town that I do here in Cleveland um, can be a great resource there. Obviously leveraging things like LinkedIn and social media to get to know people, follow people, understand them, ask them questions, set up time to talk, like all that stuff um, can be incredibly paramount. And then just be persistent. You know, don't give up. If, if the first, you know, the first round of it, I mean, I can tell you from experience, I had a lot of rounds of it that didn't go well. Um, don't give up. Keep, keep pushing. You know, I, I, I'm a firm believer that working in sports is one of the best decisions I've ever made. And it's, um, it's an amazing industry to be in with amazing people and amazing relationships and ex amazing experiences. And just don't, don't give up because you hear no a few times. You know, no should be, no, no should be um, what motivates you to hear yes, not what ultimately decides you to turn around and go in a different direction. And so um, I would just tell you, turn that no into a positive and funnel it into more energy and more, you know, and, and develop your own little chip on your shoulders. So when, you, when you do knock it down <coughs> and you earn the opportunity, you, you blow it off, the, you blow the door off the hinges. So that's a great outlook and that's some great advice to end on. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for speaking with me. I love learning about your career and you know, your advice for getting into the industry. Thank you. And hold